everybody, and you're very welcome to our seminar here today. Uh, great to see uh, so many people here in Kerry. Um, uh, you're all very, very welcome. Um, uh, I hope you're going to enjoy our day. I think we've got a, a nice day uh, of activities and of uh, some talks, and most importantly, a sharing session in terms of sharing good practice and novel ideas. Um, like all sessions where people get to uh, spend time together and chat and get all enthusiastic, the thing that usually messes it up is when somebody's phone goes off. So if you wouldn't mind if I could ask people now to maybe put their phones on, uh, on flight mode or turn it off or do whatever you do to, uh, to stop it to disturbing your, your session. Okay. Um, so uh, I suppose today is a, a mixture of things in our, in our session. Uh, the first thing is that our seminar is run as part of the Bachelor of Arts in Outdoor Learning. So the Bachelor of Arts in Outdoor Learning is uh, it's a work-based learning degree uh, which is run in a blended format. So that means that part of the time the students are online and part of the time they're actually here with us in Kerry. Um, but it means that people who are professionals in the outdoors, uh, we have people who are working in um, disability services, people working in youth work, people working in uh, VEC or uh, ETB outdoor centres, people working in the private sector. And they're all coming here uh, to develop and evolve their practice. And I suppose to underpin their practice with uh, an educational uh, baseline. Uh, and that's our, our, our program. And as part of that program, uh, each semester we run one or two seminars and we invite our stakeholders from the community. So that would be you folks. Uh, so um, instructors, um, managers from outdoor centres, people from the national governing bodies of sport and people from the community and they come in and the students get to be put on the spot and actually deliver on what they've been learning this semester. So don't give them too hard a time today, I hope, please. Um, so uh, I'm also delighted that for our seminar today uh, that we have Dr. Lauren Lieberman visiting us. Uh, Lauren is a great friend of IT Tralee and has been visiting us for many years on our APA program. Um, Lauren is based at Brockport uh, College, which is a, a state university for the state of New York and has been involved in uh, adapting adventure sports with the Camp Abilities program for 20 years. In fact, this is the 20th anniversary of Camp Abilities. And Lauren uh, works a lot in working with physical education teachers as well as uh, sports leaders um, to uh, enhance the lives of people with disability through engagement in, in physical activity and sport. Uh, so Lauren's going to be presenting about her experience over that 20 years of um, helping children with visual impairment to engage with adventure sports at their camps and also maybe a little bit about working with the, the leaders who, who are at those camps and helping them to develop. So. Um, I suppose at this stage I should say um, hello and a very great welcome to our online guests. So I think we have, I'm not sure how many we have on at the moment. Dave, do you know how many are on at the? Eight. Okay. So um, our online guests are visiting us through uh, Blackboard Collaborate. And actually this is the system that we use to communicate with our students. Uh, around the country. So they do online tutorials with us uh, and online lectures using this system. Um, so during the day they're going to be um, interacting with us and they'll get an opportunity to ask questions uh, to the speakers here today and to participate as, as much as is possible. So welcome to those. Okay, so uh, in terms of our session, the, the, the program for today, I'm going to talk a little uh, briefly about uh, what I've called making the outdoors accessible, it's all in the mind. Okay, I suppose it, it's a, uh, for me, a, a lot of it is about having a, a positive mental attitude to your approach to working with people with disabilities and creating opportunities for them uh, to excel and, and to engage in, in these activities. Lauren's then going to speak to us about uh, her experience and practice with camp abilities. And then after that, we're going to, um, to go outdoors and get active. So we've got two workshops uh, that we're going to run, and we're going to run each one twice. One of them is going to be based in the woodland down below here and um, is focused more around adventure sports. And the other one is going to be based on the AstroTurf and it's based more around physical education teaching and around adventure activities. 
So as you were coming in this morning, uh, you would have been given a little questionnaire. Uh, so our, our students are engaging uh, in a research module this semester, so they're very interested to know about people's opinion and gathering them. And so we're going to try and do a little experiment and try and gather some information during the day. Um, you'll have noticed that some of you got a blue page and some of you got a green page. So what we're going to suggest is that if you're in the blue group, that you'll be going to the AstroTurf for the first session. And if you're in the green group, you'll be going to the Woodlands for the first session. And then we'll swap around for the second session. So everybody gets to see both, both sessions. Um, so that's our, um, that's our plan up until just after lunch. Then at those sessions, our students are going to lead those sessions and they're going to show some ideas about good practice and innovations around including people with disabilities in adventure activities and in physical education in, in the adventure activities area. Um, when we come back, we're hoping to share good practice and people might uh, bring ideas from their own workplace uh, that they can add to the, uh, to the room and we're going to map those out on uh, charts on the wall. And the, some of the students have also prepared some reusable educational resources, handy um, cards and resources that you can use for um, uh, orienteering, for trail activities, for adventure games, and they're going to be sharing those with you. Um, finally, uh, well not finally, but penultimate session we're going to have is a rapporteur session. Uh, and I want to thank um, Alan Ringland, if I can see him in the room. Oh, there he is. Dr. Alan Ringland is uh, one of our lecturers in physical education in the health and leisure department and he's going to act as rapporteur for the day. So if you see him furiously writing notes when you uh, are saying something, it's, uh, it's not that he's getting notes prepared for the guards or anything, he's, uh, he's getting notes prepared for the, uh, the session at the end of the day. Uh, now, our rapporteur session is the penultimate uh, session of the day because we actually have another session which we're going to run on the shoulders of today's event and that's in association with Coaching Ireland. Uh, and I'm very delighted to have Declan O'Leary and Fiona Larkin here from Coaching Ireland and a number of representatives from national governing bodies in sport in the adventure area. And Coaching Ireland are working with those adventure sports national governing bodies to try and explore uh, inclusive practices and how uh, people can be made more welcome into the area of adventure sports uh, in coaching programs, in clubs, and in community activities. So we're going to have a meeting at the end of the day for particularly for national governing body people or people involved in training, but also I think for our teachers, for people from the uh, outdoor education centers and anybody else who's interested in that area, they would be all extremely welcome uh, to see the documentation that Coaching Ireland have uh, uh, produced and to, to express an opinion on it. So we'll be having that meeting at four o'clock in, um, in room U3, uh, U306, okay? But I'll be reminding you of that later on. Okay. Um, what I'm going to start with, if it's okay, um, and Dave will have to go to web tour for this for, uh, for a moment. We're, um, I thought I'd just show you a short film that we made uh, with the CARA APA Center um, about making uh, the outdoors a bit more accessible.
Okay, so <coughs> that was um, a film we made uh, two years ago uh, with the support of the Department of Justice and Equality um, uh, who uh, funded us to travel around the country to organise events um, at uh, outdoor education centres, at community venues to try and encourage people to, to get involved and to go outdoors. Um, as I said, uh, making making the outdoors happen for people with disability, I believe is all in the mind. Uh, I, I say it's in the mind because people with disabilities often experience um, a society which doesn't um, tell them that they can go outdoors, that doesn't tell them that they can do things, that's very quick to point out to them what they can't do. Even the fact that we call people disabled um, uh, is, uh, creates a certain mindset. And for us, for those of us who work outdoors, who engage with the outdoors, I think we're Im immediately at a, an advantage because we're all the time coping with changing circumstances and we're all the time looking at identifying uh, what we can do with the people that are in front of us in the environment, uh, whether it's encouraging somebody to, to go for their first steps rock climbing or for their first lead climb or for their first paddle on a river or for their first time uh, out on the, on the sea in a sailing boat. So I think we all have that capacity. And in physical education, where teachers are encouraging people to leave their Xbox, to leave their phone, to actually engage with their body, to engage with the environment, we're all the time encouraging people and supporting people. And really, to do this for people with disabilities is merely an extension of that. And it's about having a, a positive attitude to it. What I would, what I would ask is, uh, that maybe if I show you one or two slides and you tell me what, what comes into your mind when you see them. This is uh, 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 a good friend of ours, Antoinette, who is a, um, a student at the Skills for Life program with the St. John of God Service. What kind of things jump into people's minds when they see a photo like that? Courage. Courage. Yeah, I think that's a really good phrase because I know uh, one of the students who, uh, who we bring out uh, to do adventure activities, to learn about leading groups in the outdoors, uh, working with Antoinette, in their journal afterwards, they wrote that they said that Antoinette was their hero because Antoinette was the bravest person they knew because the, my third year uh, PE students were very nervous standing at the top of um, a telegraph pole 30 feet in the air out in the Dingle Peninsula as it's moving around um, uh, in the wind. But Antoinette had no fear, not because she didn't understand the dangers, but just because she had that courage, she had that determination, and she found something that she could do, and somebody was making that opportunity for her. What do people see in this picture? Pardon? Teamwork. Teamwork, yeah. Concentration. Concentration, yeah. Who's in charge, do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is, um, uh, uh, this is a chap who uses the Enable Ireland services in Limerick, and this is out uh, orienteering uh, at Curra Chase. And Kevin, who's, who's uh, one of my students pushing the chair, uh, he's, uh, his head is down. He's not, he's not sort of focused on the map. He's not particularly paying attention. He's basically supporting uh, this person and enabling them to, to orienteer. This guy's well able to orienteer. He's well able to follow the map himself. But just the terrain they're on is not the kind of concrete and carpet that he usually runs his wheelchair on. But when he has the support of somebody to help him to make that environment more accessible by providing the, the move, uh, then he can do all the navigation for himself. Okay? And I think that's the key for us, is identifying not people's disability, but their abilities, what they're able to do, 
and helping them to meet their abilities and helping them to have expectations, to have desires to do things and to make those happen. Um, in terms of uh, when we go outdoors, uh, and you'll see it today when we show you some of the adaptations that we, we do, uh, we have to use our minds. We have to look at standard adventure activities, standard adventure sports, standard curriculum items from the primary and post-primary uh, physical education curriculum and say, how can we change these around? How can we adapt them? Um, how can we make them fun, interesting, but still connected to uh, the original uh, theory or the original concept? So this is string orienteering with uh, service users from the Brothers of Charity service in, in County Limerick. So uh, a participant who probably would struggle to read a map but can really get stuck into orienteering. They can still con punch their control card. They can still follow a course off the trail. And I was telling my students previously that uh, for, for this group, the most challenging thing, you can see the car park in the background, which is about 10 meters away. The most challenging thing for the group was getting to this first control because there was like a 15 degree slope. And because their lives generally are on flat surfaces, this was a real problem. But once they overcame that 15 degree slope and got up into the woodland, they were then autonomous. They could do things on their own. Uh, they weren't dependent on anybody else. Uh, and that's very, very powerful in terms of what's going on in our minds, to feel that sense of independence. I think most people who engage in outdoor activities uh, cherish that sense of independence and autonomy that we get when we go outdoors. People with disability can get that too. People with disability do get that.